Okay, welcome everybody to the first episode, long overdue. This is like our third shot at doing this. First episode of the 1973 podcast. Uh, I'm your host, AC, and I'll be uh, rolling along with all things Gen X and Gen X perspective. We got a good group. These guys have known them forever, and uh, we're all usually on the same page. And uh, we're here to talk all things sports, wrestling related, and everything in between. So let's uh, start by uh, introducing, uh, we'll start with Tom. And uh, Tom, take it away. Hey, my name's Tom. Uh, been friends with Andy for like 25 years. I'd like to say my sports specialty is probably football hockey and baseball and uh i'm not as much of a wrestling fan as i used to be but I, I the old stuff i can i can handle and uh i'm huge into uh all things pop culture ed what do you got let's, let's... Hey, what's going on I'm, I'm ed i've known these two characters for quite some time probably close to about 25 years plus um so pretty much my specialties are you know i like sports and talk a little bit of new new school wrestling type thing uh, along with Tom, um, definitely know a little bit more about the the older days, if you will. Sometimes we are we are coming from an old school perspective, uh, for sure, yeah. for sure. All, all born so, in '73, so that's the, how we got the name 1973 podcast. So hopefully, as the weeks go on, we'll get a little better. Maybe we'll get some better, you know, maybe some sponsorship. I'd like to start off by giving a shout out the hat, our buddy Scott Brock Street Brewery in Canada. Scott, if you're listening, with throw us throw us some sponsorship. Here we go. We're we're starting at the ground floor. I don't know what I'm doing, but here we go. So uh, we were tossing around different things to talking about, and uh, first thing we want to talk about is uh, you know the outcome of the Super Bowl. I don't have a lot to add too too much with that, but uh, I'm sure these guys watched it, and uh, we've been saving the talk for. You know, after the Super Bowl, so uh, you guys want to add something to, you know, what happened with the Super Bowl this year? Well, I thought it was pretty Go ahead, Ed. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, you know, I thought it was a you know, pretty exciting Super Bowl. You know, I thought both sides of the ball played really, really well. I think Jalen Hurts really kind of showed who he was. I mean, you know, three rushing touchdowns and a passing. I mean, that's that's pretty, uh, you know, he played wide open, you know, and then Mahomes was just Mahomes. And, you know, Andy Reid really just did a great job in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I think that uh, the flag that they called at the end, I mean, you know, one play doesn't make the Super Bowl. However, you know, I mean, the referees at that point really kind of kept their whistles in their pockets and the flags in their pants. So it's kind of eh, that, that one kind of was a little questionable. Um, but I mean, overall, I mean, I think it was just a great Super Bowl. I mean, and. You know, the grass had nothing to do with what what the outcome was or anything. You know, that's just silly. And, you know, I mean, I think both teams played really, really hard. Probably one of the better Super Bowls that's been out there. Tommy, what do you think, man? I agree with the – I mean, they both played really well. Like, the refereeing, it seems like every playoff game this year, they actually made a call that – not to say it was a bad call, but it was a critical – in a critical situation where, to me, you let them play. It's – Unless it's blatant, then you then you call it. And I mean, technically, that was a holding, but I don't know. I just think you let him play. And I agree with you. I mean, Hurts, he's an OU boy, so I like him. But uh, and I'm a fan of his. But uh, I just, I'm uh, I was impressed. I just thought they should have ran the ball a little bit more just to get the heat off of him. I don't know. If, if him like at the end, you kind of see his his shoulder must have been bothering him because on the last Hail Mary, he didn't really have much on that throw. But oh, I don't for know. sure, for sure, I, I really think that uh, Mahomes, he's the best quarterback in the league right now. I mean, the guy can create, and when you think about it, all he has is Travis Kelsey really as like a dominant guy. Don't get me wrong, uh, Juju Smith and uh, Darius Tony played well in the game, but. They're not really anyone that you game plan for. I mean, Kelsey's really the only guy that you have to game plan for. Oh, I agree. And then, uh, you know, that uh, Pacheco guy, that running back, I mean, he played a hell of a game. Oh, yeah, know? Isaiah, yeah. And, uh, and, I mean, he and the thing about it is, is that, man, he took a pretty big pop right there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, he did. 
that I mean, it was clean. I'm so glad that they, you know, that they didn't call that as like, you know, playing too hard at football, you know? Yeah. I mean, which is kind of becoming like, you know, the thing of the present, you know? So, I mean, it's, it was just nice to see like, you know, on real grass, you know, it's kind of just nice. It just, I thought that, you know, it was, you know, it kept people's eyes on the game. And it was an yes. exciting game, you know? And, that, and I mean, I think you can't ask for anything more, you know, for, you know, for your last game of the season to be like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, and we can go look back to 85, you know, and that's what a blowout is. <laughs> yeah. And I have to give credit to uh, Phillies. I mean, as much as the, the people were complaining about the field, I, they showed that Hertz had changed his cleats. Now, it didn't come back to, I mean, they didn't win the game, but you would think that, uh, I mean, I don't know if he was the only one, if they were just the, they showed him because he was a quarterback, but the, that, that, I think that played a big part of it. I mean, that may have been why they didn't run the ball. I don't. I don't really know what what that was. They were a running team almost all season, but I don't know if they just figured they could pick on Casey's cornerbacks or what. But I was hoping that Christian Okoye was going to play, but <laughs> just just throwing it out there. Or, or, Throw a little Derek Thomas action. Yeah, I was there. waiting for Mike Quick or uh, Randall okay. Cunningham or somebody I actually knew to show <laughs> up. But, I mean, just to just to add to you know the last time that I was paying attention to anything like that, but I, I guess I should, cause I knew we were doing this. So, <laughs> well, what do you, I want to ask you guys what, what you guys think about um, the sports betting now, like with the DraftKings and all that other stuff being so prominent. Do, do you feel that there's like uh, any fix at all with some of that stuff? Um, what's your take on that? Go ahead, Ed. Uh I don't know, man. We all played the game, right? We, I mean, at some sort of level. I mean, it's, it's. I don't know. It's hard to really seem like they could actually really do it. It sometimes it does give the impression that it is, but I mean, I guess you know, if you really take it back and you really look at it from like, like what's right and what's true about it is, I mean, you're talking about professional coaches. This is what they do. They don't worry about anything else. All they have to do is they all have to do is worry about being like, okay, being the best coach of football. You know. I mean, they have professional ways that they break down film now. Like, it's ridiculous. And, I mean, I think a lot of it is is that, you know, look, I mean, would you rather have this gambling money kind of go back into the government for roads and education and stuff like that, I guess? You know, if, if you want to look at, like, big, like, long piece on it, you know? So, I don't know. I mean, it, you can give instances where it looks really suspicious, but, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to I really think, see. But... I think it's so hard to – fix a game there's so many cameras around that it would be it, it would get caught I think it would have gotten caught at some point if it was something that was blatant I mean granted the referees might be able to do something but I don't I don't I think it's just too hard to uh to to actually get away with it I don't I think it something would have happened throughout the years where somebody would have gotten caught you sure I mean I think that you know I mean, it's it's fun to go really conspiratorial with it and be like, nah, this is fixed. I'm telling you, nah, it's fixed. So I don't know, man. I, I gotta ask. So the football cards, right? Yeah, yeah. They come out on like a Tuesday. Yeah. So all those scores are already like so close when the outcome comes out. So how can they predict the score that those, tight? Those Vegas guys are so good. Those the sports bet the bookies and they are they are really really good at. I mean, they they are so close with what they, when they put these things out, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because there's a lot of money involved, but I'd like to think, I, I think the kid in me hopes that it's still legit. Do you but, think out of all the sports that football is the easiest one to fix or one of the harder ones to fix? I mean, what, what would you, what I think it would probably be the hardest to be honest with you. Ed, what do you think? I think from an outcome, probably yes. However, the thing about it is, is that I think that, you know, you said it at the beginning, the referees kind of can control the game because the thing is, is there is holding on every single play. And they, no matter what level of football, there's, there's holding on every single play. You can't get you, So you can throw a holding flag and it changes the game and it kind of keeps things, you know, that way. But I, I don't know, man. I just, I, I agree with Tom. Like, you know, the conspiracy guy in me loves it. Like and says, yeah, they're fixing it. I don't know, man. That seems really tough, you know. So do you think that as far as football goes, do you think they have the worst all-star game in 
pro sports? Do you think the Pro Bowl is like the, the worst one out of the four? I mean, I, I really feel like that the, uh, you know, it, you're playing you're playing flag football now. It takes the, yeah. it takes it takes away from the game. You know, um, I mean, I understand it. Like these, I mean, like you know, the three of us, we never played at a really high level. These guys are like just incredible, like athletes. You know. And I mean, these their investments for the, for these teams, you know. And I mean, you and you can truly see it when one of the better players goes down for a team. You can see that how much of a difference that they make, you know. And these guys are professional football players, man. That's that, that's what they do. That's their living, you know. So I don't know. Well, as but far as the my, the All Star game, games, yeah, yeah the, I, just, I think it's. Yeah. I think that uh, as far as the All Star games go, they've changed so much since, you know we were kids and it was more about, about the game. And I, I never cared what the score was, but it, it seems like it's so gimmicky now, like with the shootouts and, and all that yeah, other yeah. stuff. I, I miss the old school skills competition where it was like, you get the alumni game versus whoever the hometown team was, you know, you get to see the, the, the local heroes versus the NHL all-stars of, of the past. I missed that. Um, I, I miss the old school format of the 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 fastest skater and out of shot and mm-hmm. I don't need to see, you know, all kinds of crazy get up trick and, shots and yeah, stuff. Yeah, trick shots and all that stuff. I mean I think I I miss even the old school slam dunk contest the way it used to be. Uh you yeah. know, yeah, that's Bud Webb won it and you know, yeah. Dominic versus Jordan. I miss all that stuff. I mean, I, I think less is more when it comes to that. I think uh it's too gimmicky, way too gimmicky, especially like the outdoor games. Like we went to that first one at Fenway. It was like cool. And then they started doing the stadium series for all teams that, yeah. Hey, if you don't deserve a, an outdoor game, you know, so be it. I mean, stop, stop throwing them where they don't belong just because you're trying to draw ratings or you're trying to get everybody in the mix. You know, I could go on and on with how watered down the leagues are now. I mean, that's a whole conversation in itself with how many teams are in the league and mm-hmm. you know you got guys that are like AHL quality in the NHL and they don't even belong there and and now yeah, that's that's a whole discussion too so I mean as far as that goes Tom what's what's the thoughts on the uh current NHL like with them adding more teams what do you think I think it's terrible I think they need to retract if anything or yeah. don't, or at least move teams like Arizona they 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 don't have they don't deserve to have a team right now i mean you're playing at a college rink and it's only seats something like 5000 fans i mean it's just that's an, an embarrassment to the league if i mean i don't know why batman went along with it what i don't know i mean maybe it was the board of governors that voted on it but it was terrible i mean terrible idea when you have like quebec that could have that should have a team i mean there's no reason why they don't should not have a team right now just, agree totally agree Totally agree. That my heart is with them and Hartford. It always has been, always will be. I mean, I think uh, you know, the Whalers were the perfect other New England team. They had such a fan base. When they won in 2006, that was almost like almost like the Whalers Stanley Cup. They they should have never moved. Greed always. Look at what Dallas, they left Minnesota and then just to put a team back there, the Jets, the same thing. Yeah, they've had two failed franchises in Atlanta, the Thrashes and the Flames. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, it when it works, it works. I don't know why they don't market the AHL and see where the AHL teams do well and then build an NHL okay. franchise there. I, I don't get it. I don't get why the league doesn't understand that there's certain teams that fans are drawn to and the whale is the, the one of them. They still sell in the top 10 best merchandise uh, draws for the NHL uh, every year, top 10. And, you know, all that vintage stuff, they, they it's low hanging fruit with that. Oh, wow. yeah. Ed, thoughts on the whale is? Well, I mean, I mean, how can you not remember the whale? Right. I mean, right. You know, I mean, former, you know, World Hockey League team, you know, they brought it into the NHL. You know, I I mean, I think part of it is, is that, you know, I mean, there's only so much as far as population density and people that like hockey. And, you know, I mean, the whole piece with Arizona, I mean, it seems like they're going to be moving to a different market anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, two thoughts on on bringing up the whale is we had Bobby Hall passed away, and uh, yep. I wanted to bring that up too. The huge uh, part of the whale is coming into the NHL. He was the first guy to get paid a million dollars for jumping to the World Hockey League. I mean, met him a couple times with the kids. Awesome. Very, very cool. I mean, uh, not pretentious at all. Very, very good personality. Good with the fans. Uh, you know, he's had his personal problems behind the scenes with with certain things. But, uh, I mean, you always, from an outside perspective, true legend. Everybody likes to throw around the uh, legend tag with a lot of things. And definitely a true Hall of Famer. I have an argument with a with people about who should be in the hall of fame and who shouldn't be. And there's guys that are waiting that'll, that don't get in and other guys back in and you're like, I don't, I don't get it. But uh, you know, we can, we can talk uh, wrestling hall of fame too. That's uh that's crazy. You know, Johnny rods and Coco beware are in there and other guys aren't, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay with the, with the hockey. And um, you know, uh, I was listening to uh spit and chiclets podcast and, they almost called it that Gary Bettman's trying to fix uh, Phoenix to get the uh, Connor Bedard pick. To, uh, I don't know if either one of you guys heard that. That uh, Biz had said something about that on the on the podcast about no. him having a conversation with Gary Bettman on the down low, and they said that the fix is almost in to get you know Phoenix the the first pick. So, and I don't know. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's crazy how. Uh, how it goes with, um, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. But uh, we got about uh, 10 minutes left. I just got the, uh, the count. Yeah. But, you know, thoughts on that? Thoughts on Phoenix getting the first pick? It would make them more enticing if to sell if you had, if they had, like you say, if they get Bedard, that'd be a lot more enticing to, uh, to a, possible uh new owner i don't know if there's anyone who who is uh like prospective uh prospective owners out there but they well, that would help they're sitting in an arena that's it's a college arena I yeah mean, it's horrible on. yeah yeah it's, they've had what three or four arenas already and it's just it's just tough I mean, they, when you... they've got they don't want to spend any money they're trying to trade uh the defenseman there i try, oh try chikrin to... yeah chikrin. Yep. Yep. And uh, I mean, I love Keller. Keller's one of my favorite players. And yeah, it's horrible that he's stuck out there because people on the East Coast can never see how good he is because they're always on at 10 o'clock. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's so. tough. That's a tough watch if you're an East Coast guy. And if you, you know, it's being a fan of anything West Coast, it's tough because if you, you get up and you work and, you know, to stay up till one in the morning to watch a game, I mean, it sometimes there's some some snoozes to sit through. So, I mean, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I had seen the thing where, you know, you know, they get Connor Bedard and next thing you know, Austin, Ma Austin Matthews wants to go back home and all of a sudden they get a little bit of traction there to sell and who knows, yeah. then they can move them to Hopford and then we'll, we'll call it a day. <laughs> that yeah. would be great. Yeah. They can relocate over there, but um yeah, it, it's it's tough. The I mean, the NHL. No, everybody doesn't love them like we do, and uh, you know, it's there's not a lot of uh, good hockey coverage. I mean, even some of the coverage you get is kind of kind of tough. So, and Ed, I'm sure the the hockey coverage down there is uh, even worse. Yeah, I mean, we don't. The nice thing is, is that down here we do have the Mississippi Seawolves, and you know they're they're kind of like what would be considered to be like a East Coast Hockey League kind of Sun Belt type of team. Yeah. Um, you know they're they they're not stuffing they're not stuffing the place out like when they first started. Um, but I mean they're still for a minor league hockey team on a Friday night. Um, you know I'd say over half the building is filled. You know, and uh, they do try to do like move the game along a little bit and that type of thing. So make it a little bit more interesting for people. But, you know, um, as far as like, uh, you know, man, I get a Nashville feed and that's pre that's pretty much what I get, you know, yeah. or I get on ESPN or TBS, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's it's like watching it. There's a lot. Of, there's a ton of whistles, and it's just tough to watch because it doesn't flow. Yeah, know? some nights anyway. Yeah, it's just I, my favorite, you know. 
Well, let me uh, stop you there. We're going to probably have to wrap this one up for this week. Okay. Uh, we got about a couple minutes left. And before we get cut off, I just want to say that uh, this is long overdue. We're trying to get this going and, uh, you know, try to subscribe, follow, do whatever you need to. Get us some likes. Let's go. Let's get this going. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's get this go. going. Let's have fun with it. Yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, until sure. the next Till the next time we can get all get together, let's. Uh, I'm signing this one off. So for for TB and Big Ed, that's it for the first all episode right. of the 1973 podcast. Later, fellas. Oh, Later. Have a good night, boys. See you. Have a good one.